Hey friends, we're learning C Sharp and we're digging into Link, the language integrated query, building on top of our previous beginner videos as we learn more about how C Sharp works. And now we're gonna talk about query expression basics. Let's return to our code that we just ended on in our previous video, where we had a list of scores, perhaps in a game. We then had a query expression where we were looking for those scores that are over 80. We made the comment that this does not contain the answer. It contains only the question. And then after the fact, we went and did this. But in previous videos, David, we did some sorting. Yeah. There's not any sorting going on here. When I go and run this, uh, this code, uh, I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but we end up with, I guess, descending order, I mean, arbitrarily. Biggest to smallest. Some, I'm not somehow. sure what order that is. So we don't even have an explicit order there. And it looks like it's in the order I left it. So yep. let's, let's actually make an experiment here. Let's put in some other numbers. I have a longer list, small and large. And then let's go and run that. Okay. Let me put this one here and I'll put a big number over here to confirm that the order it's not is the order that it's just declared in. Yeah. It's declared in. Okay. How would we go and use the power of link to make that sorted without me going and doing another sort like yeah. we did before. So we saw before you could sort the list first. So lists have a built-in method to sort the list in place like we saw before. Mm -hmm. So I could do that. That would work. It's an extra step though. Yeah, exactly. Link, the power of link is that you can kind of chain operations like where clauses and select clauses and order by clauses into a big giant what's called a query expression. Mm -hmm. So in this example, let's delete your score, your, your scores.sort. Okay. And we're gonna add under the where clause an order by. And this is expression. interesting because you've been saying over and over again throughout this entire experience that it's all on one line and the white space doesn't matter. That's right. But this is kind of nice the way that you kind of laid it out. It's a single expression, right? Okay, but that could be on one line. Yep, it could be. But it's from something, where something, and you made space after where, so what goes there? Order by. Oh, and look, the dev look kit syntax. actually gives you the syntax highlighting. Yep. Excellent. Okay, Order so. by score. And let's do descending. Let's just sort by. Oh, the by word, literally the word descending. descending. Oh, wow. This looks a lot like, if you're familiar with, with SQL, SQL, um, right, this looks query like language. a query language. So you're basically saying, given this data source, the list of scores, I want to write a query that gives me all the scores over 80 and then sorts them by highest to lowest. Yep. Right. That's a really great point. It is like, it is like SQL, 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 <laughs> SQL but it's not. It is a language integrated query. It's not in a string. It's not embedded into something. It's not evaluated. It's part of the compiler. So That's something's right. happening underneath here. And if I, if I misspell something, David, like that. Exactly. Let's see. I'm going to get a, a compiler error because that's not a thing. That's right. See? So I know that that works. Let's go ahead and run this and see how that works. Okay. We'll come back here. We'll clear our screen. Again, I can say .NET run from here. I just want to remind our friends that I can also hit Control F5 or I can hit Control back tick, bring up the terminal here and type .NET run from here. Lots of ways, whatever makes you happy. Ooh, look at that. Select score in scores where score is greater than 80. Order by descending. It's one of the best features of C Sharp by far. This is like amazing. It really is. It Again, we saw in the previous video where we could for loop around this and make copies of copies and da, da, da. And then sort somehow, because that's even harder, right? You have to right. like do the loop, do the compare. That's the easy part. How do you put sorting into that for loop, right? So mm -hmm. this just declares you want the result sorted. Yep. You didn't say how it would be sorted. You didn't say to use this algorithm. You just said, I want this thing to be sorted in descending order. Do it for me, computer. Now, it's n worth noting that you selected a enumerable group of integers, a list, a list of integers. It's called a forward only list of integers. Right. And you selected it by at the very, very end of your language query, you said, and this is what I want out of it, select score. But then I realized, David, that we're for looping again. Can, can we get rid of all this? Can we, can we not 
So for you loop? still have to for loop, but you can select and change the type from being an int to being a string. So instead of getting ints out of this, mm -hmm. I'll ask for string. Oh, oh no, everything's squiggly. Oh uh, my gosh, I cannot convert. Uh, yeah. I can't make an int a string. <clears throat> well, right. we're not going to select score then, are we? That's right. Okay. We can go back to our Microsoft Learn instructions here, and we can take a look at how we could potentially, and this is, again, putting all the pieces together, together. from all these videos we've been talking about, friends. String interpolation, which we already know. You directly know Directly in the query. Directly in the query. Look at that dollar sign. That's pure money, That's baby. Money. That's money. <laughs> That's money. That's money right there. All right, let's do it. So let's say dollar sign, uh, what did we say over here? The score is, and then what's the variable? The variable score, Yep. right? And then we have the semicolon at the end. So here's what happens now. What we are returning is an enumerable collection of strings where the string is saying the score is blank, the score is this, the score is that. We still for each over it. But it's not for eaching over, over integers, it's for eaching over strings. And then our console.write becomes a console.write line string. I guess string i is kind of <laughs> silly. That didn't, this is an idiomatic. String s is fine. That's funny that you're going to say that. <laughs> so I was going to say s as well. Yeah, and I love that you brought that up because it didn't feel right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter <laughs> exactly. at all. But we're going to say string s, and we're going to say string s down here. All right. Look how clean that is. It's like a haiku. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. If it's, it's, you know it's good if it's a haiku. Let's go ahead and run that. Ooh, look at that. Luscious. Oh. Ah. Ah, chef's oh. kiss. <laughs> but this, this is when you find a language that feels the way that your brain works. It's it, it just like, oh, I like that. I get that. It fits. And it's putting together all the pieces that we've learned. We learned about for eaches. We learned about strings. We then learned about link and then augmented it and then augmented it by selecting these scores. So we took in a list of ints. Mm -hmm. We did filtering. That's the where clause. That's called a filter. Yep. And then we did an order by clause to mm -hmm. change the ordering. And then we did a select or a projection to transform the integers incoming to a list of strings or exactly. an innumerable of strings. Exactly. And then we could even go for further and ask more questions. So this one is interesting because it is combining that integrated query style. What did you call that? It was query syntax. Query syntax. And then we put it parentheses around it. Yep. And then that query has stuff that we can ask about it. So in this case, remember that we said it's the score query that contains the question, but not the answer. The answer didn't actually happen until here. That's right. We could say console.writeline score query dot count. Yep. And you'd get four. And now you've asked the question, how many are in that? Right. And if you wanted to, you could put this whole thing in a parentheses. Correct. And then say dot count if you wanted to. Like this. There it is. And then do something with that. Yeah. Right. And the the part that's confusing, but it's worth calling out one more time. The moment that we, it's like Schrodinger's cat, right? You have to open the box before you know what happened to the cat. You have to call dot count or dot sum or dot something before you know the result of the query. To make it do something. Right. right. This is a question that is the question answered. Yep. Isn't that great? Those are called query expressions, and that query variable is really, really clean. Here's another way to look about it in the Microsoft Learn documentation. Query variable. The from is required. These are optional. You don't have to do filters. You don't right. have to. Or sort. Or sort, right? And then you have to ask for something. So you could just say from score and score, select score. Yep. And it wouldn't do anything, right? It'd just be, here's the thing again. Isn't that cool? Very cool. All right. We'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll do some more where clauses. And we'll look at the difference between a query syntax and a method-based syntax with language integrated query as we continue to learn C-sharp.